So, hello and thanks for watching. My name is Maurice Fury. I'm from Greenpro Consulting. And today I want to talk about the purpose of connecting a CT to a SunSync converter. <clears throat> and where do you actually install the CT into your electrical system? Uh, the reason why I'm making the video, frankly, is because there are people who believe that you can put the CT at the inverter itself. Uh, frankly, guys, if that is what you think, then uh, you don't understand the purpose and the use of the CT at all. So I hope this helps to, um, for you, you to understand it a bit better and to utilize the CT correctly in future. So let's discuss the purpose first. And to do that, <clears throat> I want to visit this screen on the SunSync inverter setup quickly it's of course the system mode i assume if you're watching the video you know how to get to the screen and the way that you utilize your solar power optimally is to set this system mode to to say a zero export because that switches on the mechanism where you push back power into the grid and if you don't tick solar export, you're telling it not to push current past the CT. Uh, and if you don't tick that, but you tick limit to load only, then effectively you're switching off that mechanism of pushing back power. So this is the configuration that you should set up in system mode two to optimally use your solar power. So let's just discuss that uh, a little bit further. Um, you've got solar panels, you've got an inverter, in this case we're discussing the SunSync inverter. Then you have the critical loads, these are the loads that are connected to the output of the inverter. And then you've got the loads before the inverter. In other words, the loads that are after you come into your main DB, into the main uh, breaker, before you get to uh, the breakout switch where you go to your inverter, everything connected in parallel to the, that inverter fee is essentially the loads before the inverter. There you can see you come into your main breaker, into your DB, you go to the loads that are connected before the inverter and you go to the inverter and these two are in parallel. And then your critical loads are connected to the output. Of the actual inverter. Now these loads are of course if you get a power failure or load shedding in South Africa then uh, the battery will feed the critical loads but the battery will not feed power to the loads that are before the inverter. However if you have solar power then the inverter is capable of pushing power back to these loads and if you watch my video on what is a proper hybrid inverter, then you'll understand the advantages that you are getting from that. Okay, and then of course it charges and discharges the battery. But where it's connected to the, uh, to the main switch coming into the property, into the main DB of the property, there you install a CT. Now the reason why you install it there is because SunSync assumes in its software that that is where you install it. And the whole control mechanism and the control software that is implemented in the SunSync assumes that that is where the CT is. Okay, so if you go back to this, you'll see the grid trickle feed. This is where you specify the amount of power that feeds through the CT and the SunSync controls it to, um, to uh, be that amount of power that goes through the CT. Right, so let's just talk about it quickly. So what can happen is that the solar power gets pushed back if there's extra power and we'll look at an example just now. And then this CT actually measures the current and the inverter will either increase or decrease the current flowing in this way so that it controls the current there 
at this level. Okay, so let's look at an example. <clears throat> let's say you have, and this is a hypothetical example, let's say you've got a potential of 5 kilowatt in your panel. You've got about, like, let's say, 6, panel, uh, six kilowatt peak worth of panels. Midday, nice sunshine, so the panels should be able to produce 5 kilowatts. Your critical loads at that point in time draws one kilowatt. Okay, so there's four kilowatt potential left in the panels. Let's say your battery is full. That just makes the example simpler. So there's no power going to or from the battery. And now you have potentially four kilowatt that the inverter can push this way. That's at five kilowatt minus one. So the inverter can push four kilowatt in this way. These loads like your stove and your geysers and things that are not on backup let's say they at that point in time they draw two kilowatt you're busy making coffee the kettle's on and you're drawing two kilowatt okay that means <clears throat> there's two kilowatt left that can go into the grid now we all know um the the regulations are slowly changing and the rules with municipalities are slowly changing but in most cases, if you push power back into the grid, they actually charge you for the power instead of giving you money back for the power. And even worse, they could switch off your power. So the meter actually switches off, and then you have to wait for somebody to come and reset it, or in some cases it resets after a couple of minutes. But in any case, you do not want to feed power back into the grid unless you have a... Uh, agreement with your uh, utility provider, Eskom or the municipality, that you can do it. Okay. Now, in this example, you've got two kilowatt too much, and that is being pushed back in this way, and then it gets pushed into the into the grid. So the CT measures that two kilowatt. Okay. You've told it to control that to twenty watt. So if that is two kilowatt and you control it, to, uh, you want to control it at two kilowatt in round figures, what the inverter will do is it will cut this back to three kilowatt. The power um, that the inverter produces. So now you've got one kilowatt going there. You've got two kilowatt going there. So you are productively utilizing three kilowatt the inverter cuts itself back to 3 kilowatts, so that current there is now equal to zero. And the purpose of this CT is to tell the inverter whether there's current flowing into the grid or not, so that it can control the power that it produces to be the sum of this plus that. And it's as simple as that. That is what the CT is used for in the inverter okay so let's just quickly look at an example of the people who think that you can actually take the ct and put it at the inverter now remember the software assumes that you've got the ct there okay now you go and you put the ct there so now there's confusion between what you uh, what you thought you were doing and what the inverter assumed you should be doing. So now, if the inverter measures that current, then it will say, okay, I'm going to cut the power that I produce so that this is equal to zero. And the net effect is that you provide power to the critical loads, but you are not providing any power going back to the loads before the inverter. Now, bear in mind that the critical loads are generally, that's your lights, your electronics, and things like that. So you're talking about maximum 15, 20% of your power, and now you are saving on 20% of your power. So the saving that you could have on 80% of your power is now lost, and your panels become a total waste. So if we look at another example, um, I just call this zero. It's actually, you know, as we said, there's 20 watt, but that's as close as damn it to zero. So I'm going to just call this zero. So inverter cuts back to make the measured power through the CT equal to zero. 
And that means that it's not feeding any loads that sit before the inverter uh, instead of the example that we have here, which is the intended use, where it actually pushes power back to the, um, to the devices before the inverter, and it controls that current going into the grid to zero. So guys, I hope it gives you some idea of um, what the CT and how the CT interacts with the uh, SunSync software. And I also hope you now understand why you do not put a CT into the inverter or close to the inverter. You have to put it where the power comes into the house because that's the current that it's going to be controlling. If you put the CT there, it's going to control that to be zero and that is not what you want.